look at that. Your first look at quarterback Matt Ryan in a Colts jersey. That is art right there. Oh, just incredible work. Uh, I'm Jesse Cofield. Lots to talk about today. The never-ending quarterback carousel of the NFL offseason. I've got DraftKings contributors Jeff Ulrich and Steve Buchanan here to break it down with me. Big trade going down yesterday, boys, as you can see from that beautiful piece of art. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons traded quarterback Matt Ryan to the Colts for a third-round pick in this year's draft. So how do you like the fit for Matt Ryan's fantasy potential? Now, Ryan did thrive in a play-action heavy offense under former Falcons offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan. And during that season, Atlanta won the NFC. So now he's got weapons like Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman. Like, Steve, how do we feel about this? Yeah, speaking of beautiful art, you look great today. Oh, my God. But let's Thank you. about... Matt Ryan going to the Colts, this revolving carousel of quarterbacks that this team has endured since Andrew Luck shockingly announced his retirement. It's Jacoby Brissett. What? It's Carson Wentz. What? It's Matt Ryan. Look, Matt Ryan is not going to be the long-term option here either. He is approaching 40. He's getting up there, 37, 38, I think, to begin the season. And it's not like he exactly has a plethora of weapons at his disposal. You mentioned Jonathan Taylor. You mentioned Michael Pittman. You stopped after that. That wasn't on purpose because <laughs> I guarantee you, you can't name two or three other wide receivers left on that team. This is going to be a team that once again relies upon Jonathan Taylor heavily. And why wouldn't you? Because look at how much of the success they had last year. They just couldn't overcome the Jaguars and that basically knocked them out of the playoffs. There's not much is going to change here. I do see there is an upgrade with Matt Ryan. He is going to be able to throw downfield better than Carson Wentz, but we're not talking about a lot of receivers that he has at his disposal. So I'm not considering this much of an upgrade, but really anything is an upgrade at this point over Carson Wentz. Jeff, Matt Ryan is 36 years old, but he will be 37 on May 17th. He's basically dead, Jesse. Yeah, I know. The, right. um, he's look. he's <laughs> absolutely ancient for the NFL, not for the earth, but for right. the NFL. Um, this could be, I mean, Matt Ryan was pretty bad last year. We'll just start there, especially for fantasy purposes. I think he had one week where he had, like, depending on the scoring, he had over 20 fantasy points. So expectations for his fantasy potential should certainly be tempered. You're also putting him on a Colts team who passed the ball the six fewest times last year. They had the six fewest explosive pass plays downfield like this isn't an offense as steve alluded to that has a plethora of weapons where they're just gonna be chucking it down the field this is a team that wants to run the ball the nice thing for matt ryan is that he's going to be playing uh, behind a good offensive line he's going to have a running back who's just going to take the rock from him and take a bunch of pressure off so there are going to be play option uh, opportunities and it's going to be interesting to see this could be an, in an indictment on on carson wentz here if matt ryan can bounce back and throw like 30 plus touchdowns, maybe go over 4,000 yards in a lower volume pass offense. It, it's it's going to kind of show you just how the difference between even like the carcass of Matt Ryan versus Carson Wentz in his prime. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm not super bullish on Matt Ryan this year. I think this move for the Colts is far better in real life. I think you're getting the leadership potential of Matt Ryan, a guy who can game manage in the playoffs better and get them that win, big win over Jacksonville when they actually needed it. So not really looking to draft Matt Ryan, to be honest. Uh, I think he will bounce back a bit, but this is more of a real-life move for the Colts, and I think it will pay off. Okay, what about the Colts' odds to win the division? They're tied for first-best odds with the Titans to win the AFC South, sitting at plus 120, Jeff. Yeah, and, and this is where I think that like the Matt Ryan news has more effect for me. I, I think the Colts should actually be favored here, and everyone who watches this show knows I like me some Tennessee Titans futures, but <laughs> not this year. I, I think the Colts have proven, you know, like they, they, they not only did they add Matt Ryan, but they added Yannick and Gawkway on the defensive line as well. That goes along with DeForest Buckner. Like this team is primed on the O-line and the D-line here. And now they've added a veteran force at QB who, you know, I, I think is going to be in the perfect situation. You mentioned the, the, you know, the chemistry with the offensive coordinator as well and just having that O-line and running back. So I, I actually look at the Colts and I think you will see these odds eventually swing in the Colts' favor once people sort of start to put the two and two together here. And they just realized that the Titans, their big addition is a guy who's coming off an ACL surgery on offense. So I like the Colts right now, even at plus 120. I think this division is wide open for them to take hold of next year. Steve, do you like the real world value of this trade better? Like, how do we feel here? 
Yeah, I'm just writing down a note to myself. Take a bet against Jeff. His analysis was horrible. Um, the <laughs> Titans are the team in this division. Are you kidding me? Like, come on. If Jonathan Taylor goes down, so does the entire team. They have absolutely nothing unless they pull a couple rabbits out of the hat during the draft. This team is thin as rails. Then you have the Titans who are most likely going to be drafting some defensive help. That was the biggest glaring need for the Titans last season. They needed some quarterbacks. They needed some defensive backs. They need somebody to stop the pass. They are going to rectify that during the draft. They already brought in Robert Woods, who's going to be a very nice compliment to A.J. Brown. And then, oh, by the way, they also have that running back who was injured most of the season. His name is Derrick Henry. He's going to be ripped for to go as well. That is going to be an offense to fear in that division. I don't know what Jeff's talking about. He's not in his normal place. Maybe he's a little confused. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what team he's talking about. But I will absolutely say that they should not be the same odds. The Titans are absolutely winning the division this year. All right, let's talk about the other side of this trade. Marcus Mariota's fantasy value with the Falcons, or not the other side of the trade, just who ended up with the Falcons. He's reunited with Arthur Smith. Is this where we see Mariota flourish? I mean, the Falcons have Kyle Pitts, who they drafted last year, but they did just lose Calvin Ridley to that one-year suspension, Steve. Boy, I mean, what a segment. Like, so many great things to talk about here, right? Marcus Mariota, now the quarterback for the Falcons. Who does he have to go to? I know Cordero Patterson is coming back. That's good news. There's Kyle Pitts, but they lost Calvin Ridley. They lost Russell Gage. He's with the Buccaneers now. So where are they going to go here, right? Like maybe they rely upon, you know, Marcus Mariota to do more with his legs. Like we did see some nice plays uh, from him on his limited role when he was with the Raiders. I mean, he's only still 28 years old. He can still, you know, he's still a capable young quarterback in, in this day and age, but Man, the, the pickings are extremely thin. We talked about how there's no pickings in the Colts offense. There's not much here with the Falcons either as well. You know, I, I assume they're going to draft a quarterback in the draft too as well because I don't see Mariota as being the long-term option here. It's a one-year contract with an option in the next year, so there's really not much incentive there. I just don't see where Mariota is going to find success in this offense when they're most likely going to be using Cordell Patterson as their number one weapon overall, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it's after Patterson, boy, does it get thin real quick. Yeah, Jeff, Atlanta signed Mariota to a two-year deal reportedly for $18.7 million. Like, how do we feel about this? Do you think they're going to sign a quarterback in the draft or do you think they're going to be like, let's try and develop Mariota here? Yeah, so I mean, that's one of the, the things we're going to have to look at, obviously, Jesse. I mean, like, is Mariota even in line to start all 17 games? That's that's a big factor. But I do look at this situation as the exact opposite of the Matt Ryan situation. This is potentially a very good fantasy landing spot for Marcus Mariota, and you should be keeping an eye on him, like, late in season-long fantasy drafts. Look, it was only two years ago. Jalen Hurts took over for Carson Wentz on a terrible Eagle squad, and what did he do? He basically won people some leagues, like, you know, at the end of the year. He won people millions of dollars on DraftKings, likely, because of the big fantasy games he put up with his legs. Marcus Mariota is going to be behind most games. Even just looking at how much Matt Ryan threw versus Carson Wentz last year, he threw 60 times more uh, on Atlanta. It, it's going to be the same thing for Marcus Mariota. This team does not have a good defensive line. They, they were, like, last in sack rate last year. Marcus Mariota is going to be dropping back a ton. They are going to have him use his legs more, in my opinion, because that's the strongest part of his game. And they just don't have any wide receivers. So I actually look at this as a very good fantasy landing spot for Marcus Mariota. It's going to be ugly. There'll probably be a couple games where he just looks terrible and they get shut out or something. But I, the flip side of that is they're in a weak division. When they play weak through opponents, I think Mariota will put up some very big fantasy numbers. And I'm pretty bullish on him if he gets that starting job. Uh, as like someone with a late round uh, to use on a late round quarterback selection, especially if you're into that kind of thing and waiting on QBs and uh, fantasy drafts. 